The Vanishing Cabin Prom night was supposed to be magical. I spent weeks preparing, searching for the perfect dress and accessories to make the night unforgettable. Little did I know just how unforgettable it would become. While rummaging through an antique store for the final touches to my outfit, I stumbled upon an ornate crown, dusty but undeniably beautiful. The shopkeeper eyed me warily as I purchased it, but said nothing. The moment I placed the crown on my head, I felt an odd chill, but brushed it off as excitement. The night of the prom, I received countless compliments on my unique accessory. The crown made me feel like royalty, but soon, the night began to take a sinister turn. As we danced under the sparkling lights of the gym, I started seeing flickering shadows in the corners of my vision. At first, I thought it was just my imagination or the effects of the lights, but then I saw her a girl in a tattered prom dress, her eyes filled with sorrow and rage. She stood by the punch bowl, staring directly at me. I turned to my friends to point her out, but when I looked back, she was gone. My heart pounded, and a sense of dread settled over me. The temperature seemed to drop, and the once cheerful atmosphere of the prom grew heavy and oppressive. I began to hear whispers, voices that seemed to come from nowhere, all murmuring the same thing, she's back. I tried to ignore the creeping fear, but it became impossible when my classmates started acting strangely. Friends who were dancing and laughing moments ago now looked at me with cold, unrecognizing eyes. It was as if the crown had created a barrier between me and the rest of the world. Desperate for answers, I slipped away to the school library, hoping to find some clue about the crown's origin. I scanned the dusty archives and old yearbooks until I found a newspaper clipping from 50 years ago. The article detailed a tragic accident on prom night ago. Elana had been crowned prom queen and died mysteriously before the night was over. Her last words, according to the legend, were a curse upon the crown she wore. As I read, the library lights flickered, and a cold gust of wind swept through the room. Eleanor's ghost appeared again, closer this time, her eyes burning with intensity. Give it back, she hissed, her voice echoing through the empty room. Panicked, I ripped the crown from my head and hurled it to the ground. But the moment it left my hands, the ghost lunged at me, her face twisted with rage. You can't escape it, she screamed, you have to break the curse. I remembered the shopkeeper's wary gaze and raced back to the antique store, the crown clutched tightly in my trembling hands. The shopkeeper seemed to be expecting me. Without a word, he handed me a yellowed journal. Inside, I found a ritual to break the curse, a ritual that needed to be completed before midnight. I gathered the necessary items, a mirror, salt, and a black candle. As the clock approached midnight, I performed the ritual in a secluded clearing behind the school. I placed the crown on the ground, surrounded it with a circle of salt, and lit the candle. Chanting the incantation from the journal, I held the mirror up to reflect the crown. Eleanor's ghost appeared once more, her face twisted in a mixture of hope and fear. Set me free, she whispered. As the final words of the ritual left my lips, the crown shattered, and Eleanor's ghost dissolved into a mist that was carried away by the wind. The oppressive atmosphere lifted, and the whispers ceased. I returned to the prom, where my classmates greeted me with warm smiles, unaware of the horrors I had faced. The crown was gone, but its dark history and the terror of that night would stay with me forever. I tried to shake off the lingering gunnies as I rejoined the prom. The music, the laughter, the swirling lights, they all seemed normal again. Yet, I couldn't forget the chilling encounter with Eleanor's ghost or the shattered crown. My friends rushed over bombarding me with questions about where I'd been. I shrugged and made up a quick excuse about feeling faint and needing some fresh air. They seemed to buy it, eager to get back to the festivities. I forced myself to smile and join in, but my thoughts kept drifting back to the eerie ritual and Eleanor's tragic story. As the night drew to a close, I found myself standing alone on the edge of the dance floor, watching my classmates enjoy the final moments of their special night. A part of me felt relieved, 
it was almost over, but another part couldn't help but feel a deep sadness for Eleanor. Her pain and anger had been so palpable, and I wondered if she had finally found peace. Suddenly, I felt a cold breeze brush past me, sending shivers down my spine. I turned, half expecting to see Eleanor's ghost once more, but there was nothing, just the empty hallway leading to the school exit. I shook my head, trying to dispel the creeping paranoia, and decided it was time to leave. As I walked to the exit, I noticed something strange a faint, glowing outline on the floor where the crown had shattered. I knelt down, curiosity overcoming my fear, and saw it was a name etched into the linoleum, Eleanor. Beneath her name was a date, the same date she had died so many years ago. I reached out to touch the glowing letters, but as my fingers grazed the floor, a searing pain shot through my hand. I jerked back, clutching my hand and staring at the glowing name in horror. It was as if Eleanor was still trying to reach out, to communicate something important. Before I could react further, the glowing letters began to fade, and the pain in my hand subsided. I stood up, heart racing, and quickly left the school. The walk home was a blur of thoughts and emotions, and I couldn't shake the feeling that Eleanor's story was far from over. Back at home, I collapsed onto my bed, exhausted, but unable to sleep. I kept replaying the night's events in my mind, trying to make sense of it all. Why had Eleanor's spirit been so restless? What exactly had happened on her prom night? I knew I couldn't rest until I found answers. The next day, I returned to the antique store, hoping the shopkeeper could provide more insight. He seemed surprised to see me, and listened intently as I recounted the previous night's events. You've done well to break the curse, he said gravely, but Eleanor's spirit may still have unfinished business. She needs closure, and it seems she's chosen you to help her find it. He handed me an old, leather-bound book filled with records and stories about the town's history. Start here, he advised. Look for anything related to Eleanor and her family. You might find the key to understanding her pain. Over the next few days, I delved into the book, uncovering a tragic tale of betrayal and heartbreak. Eleanor had been in love with a boy from a wealthy family, but their relationship was forbidden. On the night of the prom, she discovered a devastating secret her love had been part of a cruel prank to humiliate her. Heartbroken and humiliated, Eleanor had taken her own life, cursing the crown she wore as a symbol of her betrayal. Determined to give Eleanor the closure she deserved, I tracked down the descendants of those involved in her tragic story. I confronted them with the truth, hoping to bring some form of justice to Eleanor's memory. Surprisingly, many were unaware of their ancestors' actions and were horrified to learn the truth. Together, we held a small ceremony at Eleanor's grave, offering apologies and seeking forgiveness. As we stood there, a gentle breeze rustled the leaves and I felt a sense of peace wash over me. I knew, in that moment, that Eleanor had finally found the closure she needed. Her spirit could rest, and I could move forward, forever changed by the haunted prom night and the curse of the crown. The experience left me with a profound sense of empathy and a determination to seek out and right other wrongs, knowing that sometimes the past needs to be acknowledged and healed to bring peace to the present. The Haunted Venue Prom night was supposed to be a night of fun and memories, but as I stepped into the grand hall of the historic Grayson Mansion, an uneasy feeling settled in my gut. The mansion was beautiful, with high ceilings and crystal chandeliers, but it carried an air of sorrow and neglect. The whispers of its haunted history, of the bride jilted at the altar, played in the back of my mind. The evening began normally enough, with laughter, dancing, and the buzz of excited conversation. My friends and I took pictures, complimented each other's outfits, and swayed to the music. But as the night wore on, strange things began to happen. The lights flickered intermittently, and an old, dusty gramophone in the corner crackled to life, playing a haunting melody that sent shivers down my spine. I tried to ignore it, 
focusing instead on the dance floor. But then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw her, the ghostly bride. She was beautiful yet ethereal, dressed in a tattered wedding gown, her face a mask of sorrow. She moved gracefully, almost gliding, her eyes scanning the crowd as if searching for someone. I wasn't the only one who saw her. Murmurs spread through the room, and the atmosphere grew tense. Some students panicked and left, but a few of us, curious or foolish, perhaps, decided to stay and uncover the truth behind the ghostly apparition. We gathered in a huddle, sharing the little we knew about the mansion's history. The bride, Eleanor, had been jilted at the altar decades ago. Her fiancé had vanished on their wedding day, leaving her heartbroken and humiliated. In her despair, Eleanor had taken her own life, cursing the mansion with her restless spirit. Determined to help her find peace, we split up to search the mansion for clues. As I ventured into the dimly lit hallways, the cold air prickled my skin. I found myself drawn to a room at the end of a long corridor. Inside, dusty and forgotten, was a trunk filled with old letters and photographs. Among them was a letter from Eleanor's fiance, confessing his love, but explaining that he had been forced to flee due to threats from Eleanor's father, who disapproved of their union. With the letter in hand, I hurried back to the ballroom, where the ghostly bride still wandered, her expression forlorn. I read the letter aloud, my voice trembling. As the last words left my lips, the bride paused, her ghostly form flickering. Her eyes met mine, and for a moment, I saw a glimmer of hope and understanding. The room grew colder, and a soft, otherworldly glow enveloped Eleanor. She smiled, a tear of gratitude slipping down her translucent cheek, before she faded away, leaving behind a sense of peace and finality. The haunting melody ceased, and the lights stabilized. The mansion seemed to exhale, releasing decades of pent-up sorrow. The remaining students, though shaken, felt a profound sense of relief. As we left the Grayson mansion, I couldn't help but feel that we had been part of something extraordinary. Eleanor had finally found her peace, and in doing so, she had lifted the curse that had plagued the mansion for so long. Prom night had turned into a night of mystery and terror, but also one of closure and redemption. Prom night had turned into an unexpected journey through time and tragedy, but there was still a palpable sense of relief in the air. My friends and I gathered outside the Grayson mansion, the night's events replaying in our minds. We really did it, didn't we? Emma said, her voice still shaky from the encounter. We helped her find peace. I nodded, clutching the letter that had held the key to Eleanor's release. Yeah, we did, but I can't shake the feeling that there's more to the story. The others looked at me curiously. What do you mean? Asked Jake, his face pale but intrigued. Eleanor's fiance didn't just leave. He was threatened. I want to know what happened to him. Curiosity got the better of us and we decided to spend the rest of the night unravelling the remaining mystery. We returned to the mansion, now eerily quiet, but no longer oppressive, the air felt lighter, almost welcoming. We made our way back to the room where I had found the trunk. This time, we searched through the items more carefully, looking for any clues about Eleanor's fiance. Among the letters, we found a journal belonging to Eleanor, its pages filled with her thoughts and feelings leading up to her wedding day. As I read aloud, the words painted a picture of a love story by secrecy and fear. Eleanor's father had been a powerful man, and his disapproval of her relationship had led to dire consequences. The final entry revealed that her fiance, Thomas, had planned to meet her in secret after the wedding, but he never showed. That's it, I said. Snapping the journal shut, we need to find out what happened to Thomas. If he never left town, there might be records of him somewhere. The local library was our next destination. The librarian, a kind elderly woman, was surprisingly helpful even at such a late hour. She guided us to the archives, 
where we pored over old newspapers and records. After what felt like hours, we found a small article buried in the back pages of a decades-old newspaper. Look, I said, pointing to the headline, Local Man Disappears on Wedding Day. The article detailed how Thomas had been last seen near the town's outskirts, where a violent confrontation had taken place. Witnesses claimed to have heard shouting and gunshots, but no body was ever found. Do you think he was killed? Emma asked, her voice hushed. Maybe, I replied, my mind racing. Or maybe he escaped and went into hiding. Either way, it's clear he was in danger. Our next step was to visit the area mentioned in the article. The town's outskirts were a desolate stretch of land, dotted with old, abandoned buildings. As we walked through the overgrown paths, the wind whispered through the trees, carrying with it a sense of forgotten history. We reached an old barn, its structure dilapidated, but still standing. Inside, we found evidence of someone having lived there long ago tattered clothes, a rusted bed frame, and an old, empty trunk. This must have been where he hid, Jake said, his flashlight sweeping over the remnants of a life left behind. A sense of sorrow washed over me. Thomas had likely died here, alone and heartbroken. I took a deep breath, feeling a connection to the tragedy that had unfolded all those years ago. As we left the barn, a soft glow appeared in the distance. We followed it, our hearts pounding. The glow led us to a small, unmarked grave. Kneeling beside it, I whispered a silent prayer for Thomas, hoping he had found peace in the afterlife. Back at the Grayson mansion, the air felt different. The oppressive weight of the curse had lifted completely. As dawn approached, we stood together, reflecting on the night's events. We did it, Emma said. Her voice filled with a mixture of sadness and satisfaction. We helped them both find peace. As we walked away from the mansion, I felt a sense of closure. Prom night had become a night of horror, but it had also been a night of healing. The spirits of Eleanor and Thomas were finally free, and their love story, though tragic, had been brought to a poignant end. We had faced the darkness of the past and emerged with a deeper understanding of love, loss, and the power of redemption. The Grayson Mansion, once a place of sorrow, now stood as a testament to the enduring power of love and the resilience of the human spirit.